Hello, it's David from David Savory Electrical Services Limited, and it looks to me like it's copper recycling time again. But I wonder, how many of you fellow sparkers take the time to preserve the precious metal, and is it worth your efforts to save it from the skip? Well, to answer that, I'm going to show you how I strip it, how much it builds up, and what it's worth, although prices vary over time and location, of course. This plastic crate is probably about 30 litres in capacity, so it can hold a good few kilograms of copper wire offcuts. A quick check at the time of recording shows the price of copper in the UK to be at £4.60 per kilo, and it's easily the most valuable metal that an average electrician might come across in waste form, as aluminium, brass and steel all command much lower prices. Notice that the £4.60 rate is for bright copper, and as its name suggests, this is the bright, clean stuff you'll find in offcuts of new cables, or can pull out of older cables that are still in good condition. Copper, such as these old water pipes, still has a uh, value, but it's of a lower grade than the bright copper and commands a lower price, so it's best to keep it separately from the bright stuff when you're going to go and weigh it in. Unlike me, you don't have to strip down your cable offcuts to rescue the bright stuff lurking within. A scrappy will accept cables still in their jackets or armour cabling that is still intact, but they'll pay less for it if they have to extract the materials for themselves. Of course, this process also generates some plastic waste, but I don't know at the time of recording of anywhere I can send that for recycling, so the best bet is to decant it into a site skip and leave the waste processing firms to figure out where it should end up. Incidentally, this bucket of waste plastic was from one evening of stripping off cuts and old cables in front of a film on the TV, so it goes to show how much you can get through in a relatively short space of time, and when you're perhaps not up to much else other than sitting in front of the goggle box swigging the odd can of lagery pish. Taking copper to the scrappy isn't as easy as it used to be. In October of 2013, the Scrap Metal Dealers Act came into being, which meant scrapyards were no longer permitted to pay cash for materials received and could be prosecuted if they couldn't account for where their metal had come from. This was to deter what some racist individuals may refer to as pikey bastards from nicking signal and communication cables from railway lines and flogging it onto moody scrap merchants for personal gain. The result of this act was that many scrappers went to the wall as they were now legally liable for accepting any materials from the back of anonymous white transit vans if they couldn't explain where it had come from, why it was stamped with network rail and why the 1445 from London Marylebone was stuck at Oxford Parkway because of a signalling failure. Anyway, if you run a legitimate electrical business then it should be no problem to recycle your waste copper. A legitimate scrapyard will want certain details such as ID from your passport or driver's licence and the registration number of the vehicle you rock up in, but otherwise it's honest money for what many may treat as a throwaway material. So how much effort is it to fill a crate like this and what is it worth? Well, to answer the second point first, the price you get depends on the copper price of the day and the competition in your area. Where I'm based, we have just one metal dealer left and they're going out of business in the next couple of years as the, the land they're on has been acquired for yet more development of the thousands of new homes being vomited up in this area. I could get a better price if I ventured further abroad into Coventry, Birmingham or another larger city where there are more dealers. But the place in Coventry is a bit of a trek, and what I'd gain in cash, I'd lose in time. And Birmingham, well, it's a fucking toilet, so I'll stick to my one remaining dealer in Royal Leamington Spa, even if they do offer a lower price because of their monopoly position. What this is actually worth also varies uh, depending on the copper market, which can uh, change drastically day by day. Uh, a full tub of bright copper like this normally nets me about 30 to 45 pounds, depending on the price on the day I'm ready to weigh it in. Returning to the question of effort to fill a box like this, well, on site it's easy to gather up the loose offcuts and chuck them in a bag or bucket. Sheathed solid cores can also be bucketed up and later easily stripped with a set of decent strippers. It looks tedious, but I do it in front of the television and it can be quite relaxing. You've got to do something with your hands of an evening and it's more productive than pocket billiards or flicking peanuts at the cat's arse. For larger cables, I have this rotary stripping tool, which is great for old tails, SWA cores, 4 to 16 mm twin and earth, and so forth. By running it through the adjustable stripper, I can score the sheath and then pull it away to remove the copper core. I suppose using this thing could look a bit tedious, but uh, I just switch on the old smart TV here and uh, pull up the likes of Netflix, iPlayer, YouTube, and uh, I just get on with it while keeping an eye on whatever's playing in the background. It doesn't take too much effort and it can actually be quite relaxing. One thing to mention, the government are always looking for ways to stiff over the small tradesperson, and if you're transporting waste materials of any kind, including off-cut cables for stripping or copper for weighing in, then you'll need a waste carrier license. 
It's never happened to me, but in theory, you could be pulled over for a spot check and anything on the van which is deemed to be waste materials could see you fined if you're not licensed to be carrying such. Maybe you've just installed a new storage heater for a little old lady who lives on the 10th floor of a block of flats and you've charitably decided to take away the old heater and the packaging for the new one to save her some effort. Well, if you're caught with commercial waste such as this on your wagon, then you may suddenly find your wallet made a few hundred quid lighter by the Crown. The good news is that registering as a lower tier waste carrier is free and it's for life, so you only have to do it once, but make sure you do it just to cover your ass. To put it in real terms, this little lot ought to be the equivalent of around 60 cans of Carlsberg, and I weigh in a crate like this three or four times a year. It's easy beer money without a lot of effort, and if you're on site with a plumber then that's also a great source for copper offcuts because they never seem to bother picking them up after they've sawn up new bits of pipe. Does anybody else bother weighing in their copper? Uh, do you know of other stripping tools? As always, I'd be happy to peruse your comments. So uh, far away, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta!